Hello and welcome to the 20th RoboFest competition year. This is a recording of the kickoff information meeting from November 2nd, 2018. Welcome to RoboFest 2019. Dr. CJ Chung, Professor of Computer Science and Founder and Director of RoboFest has been managing this program for 20 years this year. We also have a veteran staff of over 10 years experience I'm Shannon Polonis, the coordinator. With me and the rest of the staff and student assistants, thank you very much for allowing us to, and helping us make RoboFest a success. The agenda for today, we will discuss an overview of the program, the schedule, registration and how to advance, the open competition categories, the rules for each main competition category. Any questions can be sent to the robofest.net website, robofest at ltu.edu. Let's begin with the overview. RoboFest's mission is to generate excitement and interest among young people for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and computer science. We develop soft skills such as teamwork, leadership, creativity, communication, and problem solving, and prepare students to excel in higher education and technological careers. Unique features of RoboFest, all of our robots are autonomous. Sensors are required. RoboFest is also challenging with the introduction of dynamic playing fields, unknown factors, and no direct help allowed from adults. Any robotics kit or system can be used. Therefore, RoboFest is affordable. Teams can reuse old kits and the registration fee is $50. We conduct pre and post assessments online. We host qualifying competitions internationally, Michigan Invitationals and the World Championship event. The age division for most categories is fifth through eighth for junior and ninth through 12th for senior. We host a variety of competition categories for more opportunities in STEM learning. The 2019 season has two main qualifying competitions, game and exhibition, and several open competition categories, including Robo Parade, Bottle Sumo, Vision Centric Challenge, Unknown Mission Challenge, and Robo Art. The official general rules document and other important forms can be found on the robofest.net website under the Get Involved 2019 main page. Coaches are responsible for communicating the rules updates to contestants. We conduct online surveys anonymously. A pre-survey will be included with the registration confirmation email for the coaches when the teams are registered. A follow-up reminder will also be sent before the qualifier to the coaches. A post-survey will be submitted after the qualifiers. We will, we will submit instructions to the coaches via email in April. Lawrence Tech offers a scholarship opportunity for distinguished RoboFest team members who attend Lawrence Technological University. Individuals can earn up to $3,000 renewable scholarship for a total of $12,000 over the four years of college. Submit your application along with a 400 word essay regarding your RoboFest experience, your career goals, and a letter of recommendation from one of your RoboFest adult coaches or mentors. RoboFest can also assist with a letter of recommendation if requested. The deadline for submission is April 1st. The application can be found on the admissions page, portfolio and private scholarships on the ltu.edu website or directly at this link. This year we are offering a volunteer opportunity. We're seeking professionals from any industry who want to teach and mentor teams. We will screen and coordinate teams with volunteers. We're also looking for experienced RoboFest participants of any age to volunteer to mentor RoboFest teams. Service hours can be earned for the President's Volunteer Service Award, National Honor Society, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, school or church, or any other requirements. Please contact Elmer Santos if you are interested in volunteering. On to the schedule. On October 1st, we published our international rules documents. On October 26th, 
who published our US rules and we hosted our first kickoff meeting at Lawrence Tech. On November 2nd, we hosted our second kickoff meeting. And on November 5th, teams are now eligible to register for competitions. On January 12th, we will finalize all of the category rules. January through February, we will host on-site technical workshops and webinars for open registration will, open for, will be open for competing teams. On February 16th, we will host a warm-up at LTU and conduct our judge training. On April, March through April 21st, the U.S. and international qualifiers and post-assessment surveys will be sent to coaches. April 22nd is the deadline submission for U.S. and international video qualifier game and exhibition teams. April 22nd is also the submission deadline for virtual regional teams to be screened for uh, of winning U.S. exhibition teams. April 26th, video qualifier and virtual regional teams will be notified if they have advanced to the World Championship. In April, we will conduct Michigan Invitational. And on May 16th, 17th, and 18th, we will host the RoboFest World Championship at Lawrence Tech. We're currently working on our list of workshops on campus and in our Lawrence Tech room, day 234. These are only for teams who have registered and paid for a qualifier. We do offer a pre-registration site if you are waiting for your preferred qualifier to still come, become scheduled. Students can register for multiple workshop types. The complete list will be available at robofest.net under available workshops. Registration will open in mid-November. This is a tentative schedule. However, it lists the type of workshops we will be hosting. EV3, Robot Mesh, Robot C, and Robot C graphical workshops will be conducted for games. EV3 for exhibition, and EduBot for VCC. The Michigan Invitationals will be scheduled during the month of April at Lawrence Tech University in our Computer Science Robotics Lab. These will be small events and more information will be covered later. The current schedule for the World RoboFest Championship, scheduled for May 16th, 17th, and 18th on Lawrence Tech campus. On Thursday, May 16th, we will host Group 1 for June Roboto Sumo. On Friday the 17th, Robo Parade, UMC, Junior Bottle Sumo Group 2, and All Senior Bottle Sumo. Saturday, May 18th, we will host Game and Exhibition Competitions, Robo Arts, VCC, and the final round for the Junior Bottle Sumo. Registration and how to advance. To become a coach, any teacher, school administrator, parent, tech specialist, or scientist is eligible. Please be adults without a criminal record. Also note that email is the primary and official communication method between RoboFest and coaches. Coaches must agree to and abide by the 2019 Coaches Pledge. The Coaches Pledge states, as a coach, I am responsible for communicating and enforcing the RoboFest rules to team members, team volunteers, and others affiliated with my team. I understand that any rule updates, guidelines, additional information, and announcements will be communicated to me to me officially via emails. I am responsible for reading the information and I will relay it to all the people affiliated with my team. If any changes are made to my email account, I will notify RoboFest administrators as well as update my coach profile. As a RoboFest coach, I understand that the students come first. RoboFest is about the students learning computer technology, science, engineering, and mathematics. Everything my team does starts and ends with the principle, the students do all of the work. My team members will do the designing and building of the robot, problem solving and programming. Adults can help them find the answers, but cannot give them the answers or make the decisions in detail. I intend to uphold and maintain the RoboFest spirit. Coaches recruit team volunteers, including technical mentors and assistant coaches if needed. If, re if they are interested, they can find sponsors. They facilitate team meetings, enter and update the team data, and upload team robot, team and robot photos. 
they collect consent and release forms to submit and request students complete the pre and post assessment. There is a new coach video on our website to help new coaches get started. It's under the Get Involved Overview page. If you're looking for grant and funding opportunities, we've found several that are available. Michigan Council of Women in Technology Foundation, grants for all girl teams in Michigan. The application is due December 15th. National Defense and Industrial Association in Michigan. MEMIC, grants for teachers, and GoFundMe. Local sponsors can also provide funding. Contact your Lions Club, Rotary, Target, Walmart, etc. We will offer a few robot kits available in January 2019. Priority will be given to registered teams from Southfield through a sponsorship from Denso and the Washtenaw County Ann Arbor area through a sponsorship from Toyota. Please send us an email if your team is interested in this opportunity. We are also looking for used EV3 robots that we can then forward to teams in need. We will make sure that those kits are used by RoboFest teams. They are tax deductible and we will provide a receipt for the in-kind donation. You will also be listed on our posters and official documentation as a Friends of RoboFest sponsor. To register a team, please read the 2019 general rules on the RoboFest.net website under Get Involved 2019 main page. Go to the RoboFest.net website, click on Coach Login, and submit a new coach registration form. Confirm the registration at your email account. If you did not receive a confirmation email, please contact us. Log on to the coach account, select a competition site and category per team, register your team by adding all of the data, pay the registration fee online using PayPal or send us a check, and then upload your team photo and make sure that you update the team information as necessary. This year we're conducting the privacy policy and media release and consent form to an online application. Coaches will agree to the policy and consent each time they register a team. Students can also have their parents complete their form online electronically through the registration system. When a coach enters the team in information on the team registration page, the coach will enter a parent email for each student. Please note the student email is optional. The parent will receive an automated email with a link to complete the form online. This is the top of the form, and this is the bottom of the form. The parents will update the information, and then the student will receive the, the information will be updated in our registration system, and the student will not have to submit a form, hard copy. If the coach does not have the parent's email at the time of registration, the coach can enter his or her own email address and can forward a link in the email to the parent, or the coach can go back into the system and update the parent's email and send a link at any time prior to the freeze date by clicking save and resend. If no form is submitted electronically, the paper form must be signed by the parent and turned into the hosting site during the check-in on the day of the event. The form is now a fillable PDF available on the website or through this link. The site will be frozen to updates 10 calendar days before the qualifier competition date. We may be longer than 10 days in some sites and to allow for cross-country and international shipping. Coaches are notified of the freeze date multiple times by email and on the site's webpage. If a division at a site does not have five or more teams, the division may be canceled. Teams registered at the division at that site may be moved to another qualifying competition if available, or teams can compete by a video qualifier. To submit an age division waiver, coaches can complete this online if the team member is outside of the age of the division. RoboFest office will review the application and respond to the coach by email with approval or disapproval. 
In most cases, we do allow playing up from junior to senior division. Some questions we've answered recently about registration. Can a coach register for multiple teams at a single site? Yes, they can. Can a coach use one coach ID to register teams at multiple sites? Yes, we encourage this. Can a student be a member of multiple teams at one site? The answer is yes, but not in the same category. For example, a student can participate in game as well as bottle sumo, but not on two separate game teams. Can a team register at multiple qualifying sites? Game teams in Michigan who would like a second chance to qualify for World Championship will be able to register for the Michigan Invitational with a new team number and a new registration fee. Exhibition teams in Michigan, as well as game and exhibition teams in other states who would like a second chance to qualify for World Championship can register for the video qualifier, again with a new team member and a new registration fee. Advancing to the World Championship. International teams compete in member countries at member country qualifiers. Qualified teams will then be advanced to the World Championship through the director at the partner country. International game and exhibition teams in other countries may compete by international video qualifier submission. International open category teams in other countries can register directly for the event once the uh, registration opens. Non-Michigan teams compete at qualifiers and then trophies will be presented to 20% of participating teams. All trophy winners of the non-Michigan qualifying competitions will then compete in a virtual regional for an invitation to the World Championship. Winning game scores are submitted directly by the site hosts. The teams do nothing. But winning exhibition teams must prepare a video of their exhibition, presentation, and demonstration, and the coach must upload a link to the video to the team's registration page by 11.59 p.m. on Monday, April 22nd. The total number of game and exhibition teams advancing from virtual re regional to the World Championship will be, be decided on the team scores. Games and exhibition teams who did not win a trophy at a non-Michigan U.S. qualifying competition who would like a second chance to qualify for the World Championship can register to compete again through video qualifier with a new team member and a new registration fee. The deadline is April 22nd. Game and exhibition teams who earn an invitation to the World Championship will be notified by email from RoboFest World Headquarters on Friday, April 26th. Advancing to the World Championship from Michigan. Trophies will be presented to 20% of participating teams. All trophy winning game teams from each Michigan qualifying competition will automatically advance to the RoboFest World Championship. Game teams who do, not who do not win a trophy from Michigan qualifying competitions and who would like a second chance to qualify for the World Championship can register to, comp to compete again at one of the several Michigan Invitational events that will be scheduled during the month of April. Registration will open later in the season. Teams will register with a new team number and pay a new registration fee to be eligible to compete. Teams will receive Michigan Invitational certificates and medals of participation. The total number of game teams advancing from the Michigan Invitationals to the World Championship will be decided upon the team's scores. Trophy winning exhibition teams from the Michigan qualifiers will compete in the virtual regional, just as outside Michigan teams do. Teams must prepare a video of their exhibition presentation and upload the link by April 22nd. Non-winning teams who would like a second chance to qualify for World Championship can register to compete again through World Video, through video Qualifier with a new team number and a new registration fee. Anyone who earns an invitation to the World Championship will be notified by email on April 26th. The list of competitions will be available at robofest.net. Currently we have sites in several United States, international, as well as international video and US, US video qualifiers. We are still accepting site host applications. 
U.S. and Canada game exhibition teams who do not have a RoboFest qualifier in close proximity may register for online video submission. International game and exhibition teams who do not have a national RoboFest director may register for online video submission through the international video qualifier. Game teams must contact the RoboFest office prior to the submission to get the unknown factor for the game. When submitting a video, the coach must include the link to the team's video on the team's registration page. We will not accept emails. They must all be received by Monday, April 22nd, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Late submissions will not be accepted. Medals and certificates will be mailed to each coach who competes through video submission. Winners will be decided by judges appointed by the RoboFest office. Trophies will be presented at the World Championship or shipped to the coach if the team does not attend the event. Coaches can order duplicate trophies for teams who place at any event. The exact duplicate of the trophy that is awarded will be sent to the coach. Coaches can also order winner certificates for teams who place at national champion at championship events, which would indicate the participant's name, the team number, the event, and the award. The fee for this is $10 or $1 per certificate, plus shipping and handling. Order forms and pricing information will be available on RoboFest.net website very soon. Open competition categories. The 2019 open competition categories do not require a qualifying competition except in partner countries. Some U.S. sites do host open categories, but teams do not advance, and a lower registration fee is possible. All competitions will be held during the World Championship, May 16th, 17th, and 18th. World Championship Open Category registration will open in March 2019. Space is limited, so please register and pay online early. Registration fee for each team at the World Championship is $50, which covers participation medals, certificates, winners' trophies, and dinner on Friday, May 17th. The World Championship Daily Schedule is available on RoboFest.net under Get Involved World Championship. The Robo Parade is a competition where robots are constructed and programmed by student participants to follow the parade route, detect other vehicles, and stop and start without human help. The junior division for this category is expanded to include fourth grade without a waiver requirement. It's perfect for beginners. The maximum team size is five, and the current event theme for 2019 is the past, present, and future of transportation. The rules can be found on the RoboFest.net website under Get Involved Robo Parade. Bottle Sumo, the object is to be the first robot to intentionally push a bottle off the table or be the last robot remaining on the table. The junior division includes LEGO NXT, LEGO EV3, and Vex IQ. The senior classic division includes LEGO NXT, LEGO EV3, and Vex IQ. The Senior Unlimited Division, introduced last year, can include any robot platform. The maximum team size is three students. This year we are introducing new size and weight requirements for junior and senior. Rules can be found on the Bottle Sumo page. The Unknown Mission Challenge competition is a mission where Competition where missions are completely unknown until the day of the challenge for junior and senior division. This year we are introducing the VEX IQ for 2019, including as well as LEGO NXT and LEGO AV3. All robot components must be unassembled at the beginning of the competition. Max team size is three for junior and senior division. The rules can be found on the UMC page. Vision Centric Challenge is a vision-based robot navigation challenge for advanced high school students in the senior division, as well as the college division. The maximum team size is three for senior and two for college. The title of the 2019 challenge is S-SWAM, Simple, Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. The rules can be found on the VCC page. Rebel Arts is similar to exhibition, but projects are specifically focused on the visual and performing arts. Junior and senior division, max team size are five, and the rules can be found on the Rebel Arts webpage. We also host a team photo contest. 
Upload your team photograph within three weeks after the team registration and at least 10 days prior to your qualifying event. The selection criteria includes upload date, team spirit, unity, harmony, and uniqueness. Winners will be announced at the World RoboFest Championship. These are some examples of last year's winners. On to the rules for each main competition category. Main competition qualifying categories include game and exhibition. Both for junior and senior, max team size is five, and any robot platform can be used. The team registration fee is $50, which includes participation medals, certificates, and winner's trophy. Exhibition. You have complete freedom to show off any type of creative intelligent robotics project. It's our science fair for robotics. There is no recommended theme, but the robots must employ sensors. We do encourage human to robot, robot and robot to robot interaction. Program controlled remotes are allowed if the program of the remote controller is programmed by the students. Space for the project is limited to 64 square feet, including a six or eight foot table. Four minutes are given for an official presentation, including the demonstration. Team is responsible for keeping the time. Teams should not ask judges to be part of the official demonstration. Prior to a qualifier, teams can share online videos. We highly recommend this. Upload to your team registration page. We also have a lot of examples on our reg on our prior year exhibitions webpage. There's a judging rubric available under the Get Involved Exhibition page. The application of math and science theories which are appropriate to the team member's age level is a strong plus for judging. Math and science theories that are not appropriate to the age level are okay, but it may not give any advantages for the judging. We do allow one team member, but they will receive the lowest score for teamwork criteria. The site host may utilize a judging app to streamline judging and reduce errors. This is an example of the judging rubric for exhibition, the top half of the page and the bottom half. And finally, game. The 2019 game is binary blocks. The top photograph is a picture of what the, the game looks like at the start of the round. And the bottom photograph is an example of one way the game ending mission can be achieved as well as the blocks in 100 point, having achieved 100 points. The mission of the game is to develop an autonomous robot that arranges white and black blocks to represent a four bit binary number of a target decimal number. The robot must also stack additional blocks on top of the first same color block from the left. The robot completes all the tasks autonomously within two minutes without any external help. Points are earned based on final location of the blocks and the robot. At the World Championship, additional unknown tasks will be added. The documents that are currently available, as well as videos, we have the official game rules, a judging score sheet, sample unknown factors, site host procedures, and more. There are also several example videos with scoring. Go to the Get Involved game page. Unveiling unknown factors and the 30 minute work time. The unknown factors that are unveiled on the day of competition include the facility lighting condition, the table, the blocks, all at the beginning of the competition. The game ending mission and the Block order will be unveiled just before the 30 minute work time for each round. During the 30 minute work time, teams are to adjust the robot, change the code, and add programs for the game ending mission. Five minutes before the work time, all individuals except contestants and authorized staff will be evacuated from the pit area and spectator area. Robots are impounded at the end of the 30 minutes and remain there until all the robots have completed the round. Here's a diagram of the playing field. And descriptions of the diagram dimensions. All of this information is available in the rules document as well. How to start a game and deliver blocks. 
The entire robot must be inside the start zone at the start and any time a block is added to the table. If the robot has to push or carry a start zone block, both the robot and the block must be completely inside the start zone. The human player may load a block on the robot or place it on the table surface of the start zone. When the robot returns to the start zone, meaning that the robot completely passes the outside edge of the start zone line and is not touching the floor, the human player may touch it, pick it up, select a different program, and reorient the robot. The robot does not need to self-stop. How to end a game is unveiled before the 30-minute work time for each round. An example of a game ending mission is for the robot to stop at the start zone line, meaning any part of the robot must be on or over the black line. The game competition time will be recorded only if all the other missions as well as the game ending mission are perfectly completed. The world championship game ending mission will be more challenging than that of the qualifying competition. Violations that require a contestant to pick up the robot, thus incurring a pickup penalty, is if a human player touches the robot intentionally or unintentionally when the robot is not inside the start zone, the human player touches any field material except start zone blocks intentionally or unintentionally. If additional blocks are placed on the table by the human player outside the start zone, or if a block is placed in the start zone when the robot is not inside the start zone. If any of the violations occur, the judges will announce a violation has occurred and give the team the option to either restart inside the start zone with a pickup penalty. At that time, the team may request one full-time reset, or they can continue with just the pickup penalty or declare the end of the run. If the robot drops off the table, the pickup penalty or pick up, no pickup penalty may be incurred depending on the team's choice. If the pickup, if the team picks up it, the robot to restart it, then a pickup penalty will be applied. There will be no penalty when the robot drops off the table and the team declares the end of the run. There is no double penalty if the robot drops off the table and is picked up at the end of the run. A full reset penalty. The team may request a complete full reset at any time during the run. If the full reset is requested when the robot is inside the start zone, only the full reset penalty will be applied. If the robot is picked up and the full reset is requested, then both the pickup and the full reset penalties are applied. Only one complete full reset of the playing field is allowed for a run. It is done by the judges while the two minute countdown timer continues to run. Judges will reset as quickly as possible. A full reset penalty is assessed as defined on the scoring sheet. Partial resets are not allowed. When the field is full reset, all the points earned from the previous attempt are lost. The team may repair their robot and select a different program during the full reset. Again, the two minute countdown timer continues to run. Robot specifications for junior and senior, a robot team ID and team name on top of the robot is required. At the start, the robot's maximum width and length is 35 centimeters. However, after the round starts, the robot may autonomously expand its width and length dimension up to 50 centimeters. There is no height limitation. There is no weight limitation. Any number of sensors and sensor types can be used unless they are harmful to humans. Any number or type of motors can be used. Multiplexers are okay. Any material or robot kit may be used to construct your robot, including tape, glue, nuts and bolts, rubber bands, etc. Part Robot or part of the robot may not use the game elements. For example, do not use a black or white covered tissue box as part of the robot. Differences between junior and senior divisions. The game ending mission is easier for junior. The colors of the blocks current on, on the starting point of the table are unveiled before work time for junior and unknown and unveiled after impounding for senior. The number of blocks to stack is two for junior and three for senior. The dimensions D5 and D6 are unveiled before work time for junior and after impounding for senior. The number of onboard computer controllers is one for junior and no limit for senior. Here is an example of the top of the scoring sheet and the bottom of the scoring sheet.
We have some examples for scoring. There are many, many more examples in the actual rules document. We do offer game kits available for junior and senior. $10 for junior, 11 for senior, plus shipping and handling. They may be picked up in the RoboQuest office or they be, may be mailed. Um, we do ask that you cover the cost of shipping. To order, please send an email to spolonis at ltu.edu. Some questions we have received already regarding the binary blocks game. The block height and its size is different from the width and length. Can a block be placed or stacked on its side? The answer is yes. Can the robot bring the block one and block two, the starting table block to the start zone, and then the player can load onto the robot? The answer is yes. If the robot blink brings the black block back to the start zone, it becomes the same as the start zone block. Can teams modify the robot and add additional structure when the robot is in the start zone? The answer is yes, but it must be done within the two minute limit and the additional structure must be impounded. Can dead mindstorm controllers be added to weight, add weight for traction or counterbalance? The answer is yes, but they should not be connected to any sensors or motors. If the bot brings B1 and B2 to the start and I decide to load onto it, can I load more than one or will I have to load the first one, go out of the start zone, return and load the second? According to the rules, the block can be brought back to the start zone and then handled by the player. But additional blocks cannot be stacked on top of the first because the robot can leave the start zone only with one block. It is permissible for the robot to autonomously stack blocks just outside the start zone and then move the stack to a slot. Can the blocks be stacked be black? Can be mixed in color? Can they have the ink, some black and some white? The answer is the blocks to be stacked will be either all white or all black. Regarding expansion, the question was if the robot tips over, does it need to be within the 50 by 50 centimeter limit? The robot will be measured in the upright position. If tipping over is part of the functionality of the robot, it is considered expansion and any expansion must meet the maximum. If a correct block is stacked on the wrong base block, how will it be scored? This is to be determined. Can students have a binary code chart? Yes, but it cannot be electronic. No cell phones or electronic communication in the pit. We will also allow students to have a code chart um, in their possession, meaning they can have a list of the codes that are loaded on their robot. If a robot falls off the table and is carrying a block and the block remains on the floor or on the robot, can the team return the block to the start zone and keep it in play? To be answered later. Does it matter where the block is when it is pushed off the table? If the block is pushed off and the robot is still in the start zone, is it still in play? To be answered later. What if the robot intentionally or unintentionally moves the wooden bar? To be answered later. Can one block be scored for two slots if it is the only block in both slots? Yes, each block will be, slot will be scored accordingly. It might be the correct color or the incorrect color, but it will receive points either way for both slots. For both Slots. Can a team bring its own block? Site blocks will be used for the competition. The team's own blocks can be used for practice only. Can blocks be changed? Can motors? Does the robot have to come to the starting point? To retrieve a new block or to physically touch or adjust without penalty, the answer is yes. The end task will vary and will be unveiled at each competition. Can you provide an example of a game ending mission? The game ending mission will be provided when the unknown factors are unveiled at 30 minute work time. We have offered samples of game ending missions in the rules document as well as in this presentation. How many blocks can be on the floor or touching the floor? Up to three blocks can get an on the floor or touching the floor point. One block position half on the table and half on the floor counts as one point. Anywhere on the floor counts. It does not need to be adjacent to a slot. Please clarify stacked block scoring. Full points are received when the bottom block is fully in the slot. Partial points for stacked blocks may be earned if the color or if, if color is incorrect or if the block is not completely in the slot. If you have any additional questions, please send them to robofest.ltu.edu. We look forward to a very successful RoboFest season. Thank you so much for watching.